Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another video. It's just after four in the morning. We're grabbing group one, bringing them up into the holding area and uh, getting the day started. We always uh, walk to the back, grab the rake, and then start raking the beds as we bring them back up to the holding area. It's pretty cold outside. I don't know if you guys can see, but the air is getting sucked in from the inlets. It's mixing in here pretty good. Uh, we I've been having some issues here uh, with a couple more mastitis cases than we'd like to see. We got two in the last two days. And we think a big reason of this is because we can't get the doors yet in that pack barn. So we've been backing the ventilation off in this barn. We've just been slowing it down, you know, running half the fans. And that makes the humidity in this barn a little bit higher than it would otherwise be. And uh, one really important thing to avoid mastitis, which is basically a cow's udder getting sick and then the milk goes bad in there. You don't want that. Uh, one thing that really contributes to that is if your beds are moist or humid and uh, just kind of not nice and dry like they should be. So if your barn ventilation isn't running at full tilt, the way it should be, and uh, your barn gets a little more humid, the beds are gonna get a little more moist and then you're gonna end up with a few more cases of mastitis, which is kind of annoying. Again, two cows out of 300, which is how many we're milking this morning. That's not even 1% yet, so it's still not bad at all, but uh, just something to keep an eye on. We're gonna get the rest of these ladies up into the holding area and rake their beds. The cows are in the holding area now. I'm gonna scrape. Dima's in the parlor. He's gonna get the milking started. But uh, one thing I wanted to mention, I noticed that there's quite a bit less feed in the feed alleys here versus the last uh, week or so when I come to grab the first group. And I think the biggest reason for that is for the last week, our Lely Juno has been down. It has not been working. And uh, we got her fixed up. And the first day that we turned it on was yesterday. And now there's already less feed left in the morning. So it looks like the cows are eating more and you always want the cows to eat as much as possible because then they're going to produce more milk. Uh, it's just basic math, I guess. And uh, it's pretty cool to see if the Juno leaves for a week, the intake kind of goes down a little bit. So there's more feed left in the morning when you get here. And when you turn that thing on, uh, just right away, the same day within 24 hours, there's less feed left. This thing has its, uh, its problems i guess it has been pretty problem free for the last year except for this last week here so this thing's been a good unit and you gotta kind of give credit where credit's due so i figured that was worth uh, mentioning of course all that being said she is lost right now that little white light at the back means that it is paused it's not doing anything and if i look at the charging station here those lights are flashing something's wrong with that charger best thing you can always do with something electronic Let's just turn it off and turn it back on like a minute later. Good old power cycle goes a long way. So that's what it's telling us right here. Uh, no charging current. No, I do not want to continue on route. Work. Off. Enter. Enter. Yes. So that thing should be good to go again. It just uh, drove past the charging dock for whatever reason. It looked like the charging box was uh, a little bit buggered up and wasn't charging anymore. But uh, we're gonna scrape this alley and then get back to the parlor, help finish milking. Those alleys are all clean. I would usually walk up this barn and then let the cows back in, but we're gonna go through the tie-in here, through the pack barn. This way I can see right away if there's any new calves, we can bring them along right away. We went ahead and tarped up this door just to make sure that this barn doesn't freeze up like crazy. It was getting pretty cold in this barn before we threw that tarp up, so. Just walk in here. Uh, there's lights on everywhere in this barn. They're just in a night mode. 
I don't really like the night mode on anymore. It should be from 12 at night to four in the morning. Once we get here, all the lights should be on. Uh, it looks like every third light is on right now, but we can still see if there's any calves here. The reason why it's foggy is because there's still some holes in the doors back there and it lets a bunch of cold air in the warm barn and then it gets foggy in here. And I do not see any. So now we're at the front of the pack barn and we still need to let the cows go back into their group, of course. We just finished milking this morning and uh, the next thing I'm gonna be doing today is filling up our sand room. So we use sand to bed up the free stalls, our free stall barn for the milk cows there. And we need to top up the sand room right before winter time. We probably have enough sand in that room to make it till April or May already uh, because I did top it off about a month ago. But just to be 100% sure, you know, there's still some open room in that sand room. We might as well try fill it up just to kind of more further guarantee that we'll make it to next spring. You don't want to need to get some different kind of bedding in the middle of winter. You want to make sure you're going to get all the way to spring. Uh, there was some pretty cold temps. That's our sand pit right there. You can see there's already a nice little snow drift in there. I think the coldest we got overnight was minus 18 degrees Celsius. So I imagine there's going to be a healthy little bit of frost in the sand already. So we're going to see how hard the old case loader needs to work to break through that and uh, get to some of that thawed out sand. We definitely gambled waiting as long as we did, but uh, as you guys could see from the first little bit of dirt that we dug out of here, it's actually not bad at all. The frost is only not even six inches deep, it looks like. And these nice piles are, there's absolutely no frost in here pretty much. So that's awesome, we got pretty lucky. We're still gonna be able to fill up that sand room relatively easy today. So it's a great start. We're in the sand room and you can see there's still a ton of sand back there, but uh, we have some more room up front here. That's where we're going to be filling up today. Previously, in the last couple of years, we've been filling it right up to the door. I don't know if I'm going to do that today. I might leave a little bit more room there. We always make it well into summer, so there's no real need to put this room right full and kind of take room away from the buckets and the bobcat and have to park that kind of stuff outside. It's really nice if we can leave that inside. So we're gonna feed through this tarp door this morning. We're just gonna open it up. We got some pails holding the bottom down. I just made it up. Dima's just explaining to me I gotta hold the 
tarp up because the exhaust of the tractor can melt the, the tarps there. Right on, so there we have the first little load by the sand room. That uh, is pretty cold right now, too cold to leave the door open, but we can't really do anything else, so the door has to stay open. Uh, we'll grab another load, and then we'll come back with the wheel loader and push both loads into that sand room. with that semi in front of the sand rooms. Now we're gonna hop in the wheel loader, drive all the way down there. I am gonna take a full bucket of sand along with me. Might as well, we're driving out there. It'll speed things up. That's looking pretty good. Uh, that's as much sand as we're gonna put in there. Previous years we went, uh, like I said, right up to the door here, but we're not gonna do that this year. Uh, it's not a heck of a lot more sand. It's nowhere near as wide as we stack it in back in between those walls as what it would be here. So uh, another two or three semis maybe would have fit in here, but that's about it. And uh, this gives us a lot more room because we do need to store the two skid steers here. Uh, the other one's outside right now. But uh, we're gonna clean the sand out of the bucket of the wheel loader. And we're gonna hopefully not have to scoop too much out of the box of that silage truck, but uh, I imagine quite a bit of sand froze to the box of that thing. So we're gonna have to clean that out as well and then park it and we'll be done with this. That is gonna be it for today's video, guys. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.